Hi, I'm Jake Abbott, and in this presentation I'm going to be telling you about work that Henry Fu and I have done with our grad students, Bonnie Chaluvati, Kristen Stewart, and A.J. Sperry. This is part of a larger project that Henry and I have where we're looking at how we can control swarms of magnetic microrobots inside a human body. When we say control, we're talking about things like move the swarm from one location to another, or spread the swarm out to dilute them or gather the swarm together to concentrate them, or sort the swarm into two separate swarms. The types of microrobots that we're going to focus on are chiral, which are also known as helical microrobots. So these are microrobots that contain some sort of magnetic element described by M. They're going to be subjected to some sort of applied field, B, and we're going to generate magnetic torque that's going to cause them to rotate and then some sort of passive mechanical helical structure is going to serve as a propeller that will cause them to move forward, like these artificial bacterial flagella shown here. In this sort of propulsion, the axis that you're rotating the field around becomes the forward direction of the micro-robots. We're going to refer to that vector as omega b, or basically the angular velocity of the b vector throughout this paper. If you look at these micro-robots swimming under a microscope here, you see uh, that you can identify each micro-robot individually. You can see which direction they're pointing in. You can see how fast they're going. But if we think about moving these sort of micro-robots to the human body, we're not going to get these sort of high-resolution images. Instead, we're going to see something more like this. The micro-robots are going to be delivered in large groups, hundreds or thousands of them. And they're going to be, in a medical image, just something like a cloud. And we're going to be able to sort of see the cloud, the shape of the cloud, uh, the density of the cloud, and we're going to have to develop manipulation primitives on this kind of cloud-like object. If you think about doing the types of manipulation primitives I discussed earlier on this sort of cloud, one thing you could think is well, maybe we could use some sort of structure in the environment. And that's often done under a microscope. But in a human body, that's probably not very realistic, so I think we should eliminate that. The other thing we could do is we could use some sort of variation in the magnetic micro-robots properties themselves. And this could potentially even be done in a uniform field because you're relying on the differences between the micro-robots. My group has done some work in this area. So basically my student Art and I in 2014 found out that if you use the step-out regime where the field is spinning so quickly that the micro-robots can't keep up with it, you can actually differentiate the propulsion of different micro-robots in that group. And then more recently, my student Taylor Howell and I looked at how we can use these physics to sort swarms of micro-robots. And these swarms are thought of in a completely stochastic sense, so we don't know how many micro-robots there are. We just know they sort of exist in a distribution. And by swimming them out and separating them and then bringing them back in a different collection process, we can potentially uh, sort them into different size groups without any prior knowledge of how many micro-robots we have. So those sort of differences are relying on the variation in the micro-robots themselves, but what if the micro-robots don't have that big of variations? You've batch fabricated thousands of them and they're almost all identical. Can we use variations in the magnetic field itself? My groups for a long time now has been working on this idea of can we use a single strong dipole source, like a big permanent magnet, that we rotate, and then that creates rotating magnetic field vectors at each point in space that are each rotating around their specific vector. And we understand this problem very well. We initially developed it for use controlling a single entity like a magnetic capsule endoscope. But later, my student um, Nathan Nelson and I started thinking about using the properties in this field to control more than one thing at a time. So we identify that there are different regions in this rotating magnetic field in which micro-robots would naturally want to come together or spread apart or move parallel to each other. And in this video you're seeing, you're seeing two magnetic micro-robots swimming in a soft tissue phantom, Egros gel. And you can see that we can actually exercise this differentiated control over these uh, micro-robots and have them follow different paths from each other. But in this process, we knew there were exactly two micro-robots and we knew where they both were exactly. So in this paper, what we were interested in doing is seeing could we generalize these kind of concepts shown in the left cartoon, but for an unknown number of micro-robots that exist in some sort of swarm. So to do that, we brought in 
techniques from the continuum fluid mechanics community and we said okay this this cloud this swarm will be able to be described by some centroid and it will be described by some sort of velocity which will include the forward direction vector omega b and then also a speed term the swarm will also have a density and it'll have a shape that we can sort of capture with the covariance matrix and then for each of these properties, we want to know how they're going to change in time due to our rotating magnetic field. And that's going to form our forward kinematics. And to do that, we're going to bring in a concept known as the material derivative, in which we look at the time rate of change of these properties as, a, as they move with the, with the swarm. So we applied this to all of, the, all of the quantities mentioned before. And now we have explicit description of the time rate of change of the forward direction the shape of the swarm, the curvature of the path that the swarm is currently on, and the density of the swarm. And these terms require a lot of big kind of partial derivatives of vectors with respect to space. And in this paper, we've explicitly solved for all of these terms closed form, so there's no sort of numerical differentiation that has to happen. And when you bring all of these things together, we essentially have created an a priori uh, forward kinematic model for swarms of micro-robots in rotating magnetic fields. This, this model can be used in motion planners, and it can also be used as the process model in feedback controllers, such as extended column filters. So to validate this model, we did some experiments in which we had a big spherical permanent magnet placed either above or to the side of a container filled with a soft tissue phantom, again. We used little magnetic screws, they're brass screws, which are non-magnetic with a permanent magnet attached at the back end. And we put nine of them in a, in a grid pattern, so that's a nine micro-robot swarm. And then we use two cameras from two orthogonal views uh, simultaneously to track these swarms. And we do three different primitives. We move them up and gather them together. We push them down and spread them apart. And we move them down in an almost parallel line. So here in the video, what you're going to see, the first... The first video, we're going to show us pulling these micro-robots up and gathering them. Again, you're looking at nine micro-robots from two orthogonal views. And we're showing you with the red ellipse our kinematic model running completely open loop. And as you can see, the model is doing a good job of capturing the essence of what these micro-robots do. The model is over-predicting their velocity slightly. It's also over-predicting how much they gathered. Uh, in this spreading, we see something that's very comparable. The model is doing a quite good job of capturing the essence of what's happening, but again, it slightly overpredicts the velocity and slightly overpredicts the spreading. This is sort of natural in that the model doesn't really acknowledge the fluid or tissue environment that they're in. So uh, any fluid or tissue is always going to sort of retard the motion of the micro-robots and make them not match the model as, uh, as well as they could. In this straight portion where they're not turning, you see the model's doing a much better job of very accurately predicting what the swarm does. So our next step in the future is to put all of these pieces together, our manipulation primitives, our sorting primitives, and really try and demonstrate some very complicated micro-robot swarm manipulation. Thanks for watching.